Shabbat Shalom, little Hebrews and Shebrews. Today's lesson is entitled Yah's Laws, the Ten Commandments. We will be going over the first three commandments in this lesson. It is important for us to know, learn, and place the laws and commandments upon our hearts. Abba Yah has always given us commandments. Commandments are laws to guide us and to teach us how we are to live and what we are to live by. When we say commandment, what do we mean? What is a commandment? To command means, one, to direct with specific authority or prerogative, two, to issue an order or orders, three, to be in charge, to have authority. So a commandment is an order, direction, and instructions given by one authority. Who has the authority to give commandments, little Hebrews? Abba Yah. <laughs> He is our Father, the self-existent one. He is our yell. And the Father who loves us, little Hebrews, will not tell us or give us anything to harm us. Abba Yah's word, his instructions, his voice, his ruach is his righteous order. And without order, little Hebrews, we will have chaos and wickedness. Abba Yah also knows that if we love him, we will keep his commandments. Now in the beginning, little Hebrews, when Abba Yah created Adam and Hawa, he gave them commandments to follow by with his voice. Adam and Hawa obeyed Abba Yah's voice until they were led by temptation and listening to the voice of Hashatan, not the voice of Abba Yah. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2 verses 16 through 17. And Abba Yah commanded Adam, saying, Eat of every tree of the garden. But do not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, for in that day you eat of it, you shall certainly die. As you see here, little Hebrews, Abba Yah gave Adam pacific, a specific commandment to not eat of the tree of knowledge. And if he did, he was going to what? Punish him. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. We're going to show how Adam and Hawa disobeyed. Abba Yah and what he did, what he did and how he punished them for not following his commandment. Genesis chapters, chapter 3 verses 1 through 6. And the serpent Hashantan was more crafter than any beast of the field which Abba Yah had made. And he said to the woman, Is it true that Abba Yah has said, Do not eat of the tree of, tree of the garden? And the woman said to Hashantan the serpent, we are to eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. Abba Yah has said, Do not eat of it, nor touch it, lest you die. And the serpent Hashatan said to the woman, You shall certainly not die, for Abba Yah knows that in that day you eat of it, your eyes shall be opened, and you should be like Abba Yah, knowing good and evil. And the woman Hawa saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree desirable to make one wise, and she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave it to her husband, and with her they both ate. So you see here, little Hebrews, they disobeyed the commandment that Abba Yah had given to them, to not eat of the tree of knowledge. He told them they can eat of every other tree, but not of that tree. But they were tempted by Hashatan by telling them that Abba Yah was lying to him. For one thing, when Abba Yah gives us a commandment, he gives us a commandment for a reason. And he would never give us a commandment that will harm us, nor he would never lie to us about why he has given us that commandment. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3 verses 13. And Abba Yah came to the woman Hawa and said, What is this you have done? And Hawa said, the serpent deceived me, and I ate. Genesis chapters three, chapter three, verses sixteen through nineteen. It is here, little Hebrews, that we're going to see where Abba Yah punished Hawa and Adam. Genesis chapter three, verses sixteen through nineteen. And to the woman, Abba Yah said, "I will greatly increase your sorrow and your conception. You will bring forth children in pain." And your desire is for your husband, and he does rule over you. 
And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and you have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, Do not eat of it, cursed is the ground because of you, and toil you are to eat of it all the days of your life. And the ground shall bring forth thorns and thistles for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you are to eat bread until you return to the ground, and out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and dust you shall return. As you see here, little Hebrews, Yah punished both Hawa and Adam for not following and obeying his commandments. It is thus then when Abba Yah knew that we were able to choose to do right or wrong. Those who chose to keep his commandments and listen to his voice, he would establish his covenant and blessings with them. Those he, who did not, he would punish and curse them. He would make covenants with those who obeyed his voice, who obeyed his spoken commandments. Now what is a covenant, little Hebrews? A covenant is an agreement between two or more people and involves a promise on the part of each to the other. It is an agreement that one faithfully chooses to follow and to be committed to. In turn, Abba Yah promises to bless us for doing so, for keeping our part of the agreement, by obeying Him and following His commandments. A covenant and a promise are bound together, Lord Hebrews. Without a covenant, there is no sealed promise, and without a promise, the covenant is pointless. Abba Yah made several covenants with righteous men who obeyed his voice and followed his commandments. These men included Noah, Abraham, and Moshe. But it was with Moshe that Abba Yah established his covenant with Israel. It is also important for us to remember the covenant and promise that Abba Yah made with Abraham because it is this promise where Abba Yah states where he would place his everlasting covenant with Abraham's seed, that seed being us, the children of Israel. Let's go to Genesis chapter 17 verses 2 to 9. And it came to be when Abraham was ninety-nine years old that Yah appeared to him and said to him, I am Yah, the Almighty One, your father. Walk before me and be perfect. And I give my covenant between me and you and shall greatly increase you. And Abraham fell on his face, and Yah spoke with him, saying, As for me, look, my covenant is with you, and you shall become a father of many nations. And no longer is your name called Abram, but your name is Abraham, because I shall make, I shall make you a father of many nations. And I shall make you bear fruit exceedingly, and make nations of you, and sovereigns shall come from you. And I shall establish my covenant between me and you, and your seed after you in your generations for an everlasting covenant to be Yah your father to you and your seed after you and I shall give to you and your seed after you the land of your sojourners and the land of the Canaan and the everlasting as an everlasting possession and I shall be Yah their father and Yah said to Abraham as for you guard my covenant you and your seed after you throughout your generations. Let's go to Genesis fifteen eighteen. Now this is here where Abraham where Abba Yah tells Abraham what land he is going to give to him in his generation and his seeds to come. Genesis chapter fifteen eighteen. Yah made a covenant with Abraham saying, I have given this land to your seed from the river of Mizraim to the river to the great river the river Euphrates now as we read little Hebrews we see where Abba Yah promised and tells us where he will place his blessings upon and the covenant with upon Abraham's seed in which he did keep his promise he placed Yosef over the land of Mizraim when Yosef died Yosef who was the seed of Abraham when Yosef died Israel came captive and under the rule of Pharaoh. He was a wicked man who worshipped many pagan idols and deities. Now while, while under this captivity, Israel took on and adapted and practiced in the ways of our, our captivers. Now isn't it sort of like us today, little Hebrews? We have taken upon the practices of this land those who have put, who have put us under slaveship and who have oppressed us. This is the reason the first three commandments are very important, little Hebrews, 
because we were doing these very same practices as our ancestors did took on the practices of our, acti of our captivity and we will go over that in just a little bit the first three commandments now under our captivity we cried out to Abba Yah and he heard our cry and Abba Yah remembered the promise he made to us so he sent Moshe to take us out of our slavery let's go to Exodus chapter 6 verses 1 through 8 and Yah said to Moshe now see what I do to Pharaoh for with a strong hand he is going to let them go and with a strong hand he is going to drive them out of his land and the Most High spoke to Moshe and said to him I am Yah and I appear to Abraham to Yiskat and to Jacob as the Almighty One and by my name Yah was I not known to them and I established my covenant with them to give them the land of of Kenan, the land of their sojourners in which they have sojourned and if and I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel whom the Mistrites are enslaving and I have remembered my covenant say therefore to the children of Israel I am Yah I shall bring you out of bring you out from under the burdens of the Mistrites and I shall deliver you from their enslaving and I shall redeem you with an outstretched arm with great judgments and shall take you as my people and I shall be your father and you shall know that I am Yah the self-existing one who is bringing you out from under the burdens of the Mistrites and I shall bring you into the land in which I swore to give to Abraham to Yiskak and to Jacob to give it to you as a, as an inheritance I am Yah now you see little Hebrews Abba Yah kept up with his word and his promise of the covenant that he made with us now after he brought us out of the land of Mistrim he was now going to make a sealed covenant with us and give us his written laws and commandments and at this time we also promised to obey and to keep his commandments this is again little Hebrews where we sealed and promised to keep our end of the covenant that is why it is very important for us to be following Yah's laws and commandments. We promise to keep his commandments. Now after Abba Yah brought us out of the land of Mistrim, he told Moshe to take us to Mount Sinai, where he will give us his written instructions, his laws, his Torah, his commandments. And it's here, little Hebrews, where Israel promised to do what Yah commanded. commanded. Let's go to Exodus chapter 19, verses 3 to 9. And Moshe went up to the Most High Yah, and Yah called him from the mountain, saying, This is what you are to say to the house of Jacob, and to declare to the children of Israel. You have seen what I did to the Mistrites, and how I bore you on eagles, on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. And now, if you diligently obey my voice, and shall guard my covenant, then you shall be my treasured possessions above all the nations, above all the peoples, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a reign of priests and a set-apart nation. Those are the words you are to speak to the children of Israel. And Moshe came and called the elders of the people and set before them all of these words, words which Yah commanded them. And all the people answered together and said, All that Yah has commanded, we shall do. So Moshe brought back the words of the people to Abba Yah. Now what did we say here, little Hebrews? We said, All that Yah has spoken, we shall do. And Yah said to Moshe, See, I am coming to you in the thick clouds, so that the people hear when I speak with you and believe you forever. And Moshe reported the words of the people to Abba Yah.